But I'm curious if you see any difference where um, just very, very uh, kind of obviously peaceful activists like environmental activists, animal rights activists, people that attend a documentary or that use sidewalk chalk on the street in order to like write their slogans are now being targeted. If there's, if we're seeing a new low of what you call uh, quashing dissent. As many students of history are familiar, Galileo, famed mathematician and astronomer, known today by many as the father of modern science, was forced in the 17th century by the Catholic Church under threat of torture to recant his heretical view that the earth revolved around the sun and not vice versa. This scientifically valid idea voided long-held religious dogma and hence challenged the church's integrity itself. In a letter from 1634, Ren Descartes, one of the world's most noted thinkers and philosophers, stated, quote, Doubtless you know that Galileo was recently censored by the inquisitors of the faith, and that his views about the movement of the earth were condemned as heretical. I must tell you that all the things I explained in my treatise, which included the doctrine of the movement of the earth, were so interdependent that it is enough to discover that one of them is false to know that all the arguments I was using are unsound. Though I thought that they were based on very certain and evident proofs, I would not wish for anything in the world to maintain them against the authority of the church. I desire to live in peace and to continue the life I have begun under the motto, to live well you must live unseen. If we step back and think about the challenges that face this small, progressive, and scientific community during the 17th century in Europe, and compare the fear and patterns of suppression coming from the established orthodoxy of that time to that of modern day, we find only a mere variation. Descartes' revelation and retreat from exposure, as expressed by the motto, to live well you must live unseen, is a disheartening disposition that speaks volumes and sadly carries on to this day across the world. The use of fear, intimidation, and other time-tested variations of oppression continue to persist as the dominant institutions of our society work to protect its established order regardless of social validity. Even more, the overall culture itself, which invariably tends to support the accepted beliefs put forward by those who define the power of a period, also tend to condemn those who pose a challenge as it becomes a threat to the mass accepted identity itself. The result is that many are simply not willing to risk their lives, occupations, and reputations to challenge the orthodoxy of the time. Now, in late May 2011, news reports were generated that detailed how the Federal Bureau of Investigation in the United States was actively targeting political activists under the pretense of terrorism. Just as people like John Lennon and Martin Luther King were watched and harassed by the FBI for their activism years ago, it appears modern so-called anti-terrorism resources are being used to target environmentalists, peace, animal, and political activists. Just like the accusations of communism against people like Martin Luther King Jr. in the mid-20th century, this newer, more generalized device of the 21st century called terrorism is no less a heretical accusatory tool than what was employed by the Inquisition centuries ago to maintain the politico-religious social system. So, we can sympathize with Descartes' notion as to move against the zeitgeist is to position yourself against the odds, regardless of how empirical, necessary, or obvious the truth you wish to convey and act upon is. Unfortunately, Descartes' position is unacceptable in the modern world. The risks that now exist within our current order are beginning to far outweigh the temporal personal risks generated by the act of activist objection itself. It is no longer issues of accurate data, rights, and freedoms. Today our very stability as a civilization is in question, and if left unhindered, it threatens us all, regardless of one's position in the modern feudal hierarchy. We can sit in confusion and watch as global unemployment rises due to technological unemployment and the resulting regional instability that is sure to grow. We can stare blankly at the systematic debt collapse of the world economy, country by country, like dominoes, as self-appointed global banking institutions that derive money out of nothing impose austerity measures against the poor and middle class of each country to help support the wealthy, furthering the ever-widening income divide. 
we can twiddle our thumbs as what we have called democracy turns inexplicably into global plutocracy and the world economy becomes measured by how much money the rich move around amongst themselves. We can distract ourselves with our little gadgets as the rainforests, considered by many the lungs of the planet, are destroyed at faster and faster rates, reducing our ability to absorb the growing CO2 in the atmosphere. We can keep the TV on as clean water and food shortages that currently affect over 1 billion people continue to grow to 2 billion or 3 billion. We can scan the tabloids at the grocery store newsstands as the very basis of industrial civilization, the hydrocarbon economy, inches towards crisis scarcity with virtually no active initiative taken to change course. We can continue to pretend that our leaders are anything other than misleaders, set in motion by monetary, commercial interests that follow the rules of a free market, with all legislation and offices going to the highest bidder one way or another. And we can stand amused as a new global arms race gains speed as each country comes to terms with the very real reality that wars for resources are upon us in a way like any other period in history. This is what separates our world from the one that Descartes hid from. The fear tactics of the orthodoxy in this context, the FBI or any such intelligence agency, are no longer worthy of viable concern or even acknowledgement. At no time in history has any true social change come in a manner that was not opposed with hostility by the dominant orders of the time. If you choose fear, then fear exists, and those little lists and statistics held by the intelligence and police agencies have merit. If you choose love, pride, and self-respect, then no accusations, lists, or threats can ever stop you. The trick now is in numbers, and if we can gain critical mass to non-violently override the divide-and-conquer techniques used to keep the orthodoxy in place, the game is over. <laughs>